a career in the circus, the center of a movie theater lobby display, and a truly severe case of dehydration. From Old West Outlaw to The Six Million Dollar Man, Elmer McCurdy's real-life post-death story is definitely stranger than fiction. In the mid-1970s, the popular TV show The Six Million Dollar Man was in production in California. An emaciated corpse prop was called for. The show's art director found just what he was after, an authentic-looking dead body hanging from a noose in a dusty back corner of a funhouse. One of the arms on the brittle dead body prop broke off while it was being wrestled down from where it hung. Not a problem, a little mannequin repair and production would be back on track, or so the art director must have thought. Simple but effective. But the arm wasn't fake. It was a human arm with a bone sticking out, according to NPR. What the crew of the Six Million Dollar Man TV show had on their hands was a dead body and a possible crime scene. The road to Elmer McCurdy's petrified corpse being discovered on a Hollywood film set began some 90 years prior to his body's recovery. McCurdy was born in the 1880s in the eastern U.S. According to NPR, he had a stint in the Army and worked various odd jobs, including working in lead mines where he contracted tuberculosis. Unable to keep a job, due in part to his alcoholism, like many people from his time around the turn of the 20th century, McCurdy went west to find fame and fortune at the end of the frontier. McCurdy gained experience in explosives and soon fell in with criminals, according to Ripley's. But McCurdy wasn't a very good criminal, and his career was full of bungled heists and mix-ups. NPR reported he once hijacked the wrong train, and another time he tried to blow up a safe in a bank, but instead blew up the building while the safe remained intact. By 1911, McCurdy was on the run, and the law was in hot pursuit. After a dramatic gunfight with police, Elmer McCurdy was killed on October 7, 1911. In death, his tale was only beginning. As the William L. Clements Library at the University of Michigan explains, the practice of embalming a corpse, as well as embalming technology, really took off in post-Civil War America, as the U.S. population dealt with the devastating wave of mortality caused by the conflict. Even by 1911, when Elmer McCurdy died, embalming was common. And as Ripley's notes, if a dead body was left unclaimed at a funeral home, it was sometimes put on display a macabre advertisement for the mortuary services offered within. As the website Earth reported, the funeral industry was banking on people's desires to preserve the way their loved ones looked in life. Having long since fallen in with a disreputable crowd and with no family to speak of, that's just what happened to McCurdy's bullet-filled corpse, standing for many years in the funeral home with his pistol at his side like a myth of the Old West. The funeral home where he was left on display even charged for people to view him, and coins could be stuck in his mouth like an arcade game. This was McCurdy's first stop in his posthumous career in show business per National Cowboy Museum. Soon enough, word spread that the undertaker in possession of McCurdy's embalmed body had a bona fide moneymaker on his hands. Two grifters shortly came calling, claiming to be McCurdy's brothers, finally arriving to lay their brother to rest per SF gate. Believing their story, McCurdy's body was handed over, and it was then transported to California by train. The two men now in possession of this wizened dead body weren't really related to McCurdy, of course. Instead, they were carnies. From that point, McCurdy's corpse began a career in the circus, drawing crowds all over the country. Even the Los Angeles Times promoted viewing McCurdy as a family-friendly outing. And according to Ripley's, the Elmer McCurdy sideshow attraction went by a number of different names, including The Outlaw Who Would Never Be Captured Alive and The Thousand-Year-Old Man. In 1921, the Pomona Progress wrote to McCurdy, He lived a hard life and died a hard death. Now he is tougher than ever. With the decline of the carnival circuit and the rise of movies, McCurdy's dead body gradually began to draw fewer crowds as a sideshow attraction. Soon, though, the glitz and glamour of Hollywood came calling, if only McCurdy was still around to enjoy it. From the 1930s through the 60s, the rapidly decaying corpse appeared in several low-budget movies and was even displayed in movie theater lobbies. In 1933, his corpse, dead for more than 20 years, was used in the film Narcotic, playing the role of drug addict. As time went on, McCurdy was still sometimes loaned out and put on display as an oddity. Soon, McCurdy's dead body was sold off to a number of wax museums, and finally it ended up in a Long Beach, California funhouse, painted bright red. By the 1970s, Elmer McCurdy, failed Old West outlaw and in death, the one-time successful mainstay of freak shows, was largely forgotten to have ever been human, relegated to being a simple prop. The few crowds that still saw his mummified remains had no clue he'd once been alive. It's alive! It's alive! With a mummified corpse on their hands and with authorities on the scene, the crew of the Six Million Dollar Man who initially recovered McCurdy from where he hung joked they might be dealing with a severe case of dehydration, as Ripley's explains. What an understatement. 
Clues to the true story of Alma McCurdy were soon discovered at the Los Angeles County Coroner's Office. According to SF Gates, an autopsy uncovered the period-correct copper jacket of the bullet from when McCurdy was shot, as well as a ticket to a sideshow McCurdy's dead body had once appeared in, and a penny from 1924 stuffed in his mouth. The embalming technique was also correct for the time that McCurdy died. And with that, the long, tragic tale of Elmer McCurdy was pieced together, bolstered by photos of McCurdy while he was alive matched up with what remained of his body. In 1977, the body of Elmer McCurdy was interred back home in Oklahoma, nearby another Wild West outlaw, Bill Doolin. With that, the story of a man who traveled west to earn his place in the American mythos was complete.